about game transfer phenomena. Yeah, thank you very much. How many play games? Uh, we have some, some gamers here. Uh, you play games as well? Uh, should I wait for you? Or? auditory effects in games. How do video games affect um, gamers after they stop playing? So we start thinking about what if we have a real life, in real life how sounds affect, what will happen? And I would like to start with some video uh, which is a parody about this. Auditory experience 
when gamers keep hearing things from the game after stopping playing. And I will give you some examples so you understand. Uh, sorry, I didn't remove the, the text. Um, so, so far in my PhD, I conduct three different quality studies. Uh, uh, gamers experience were collected from online video game forums. And uh, there were more than 1,600 gamers experience that I have analyzed. From this experience, 12% were auditory. And this is what we are talking today. I will talk today about this. And the aim of this study was to identify, classify, and explain the different gamers' experience in this modality. And then I come with a very, very broad different uh, experience uh, that had classified in different ways. We have, for example, the more simple modality is this involuntary, involuntary auditory imaginary, when gamers keep hearing the music from the game, like when you hear a music and the music gets stuck in your head and you keep hearing it again. So this is more simple, but I will, uh, I will give you examples uh, of each one of these uh, varieties. So you can see it's a large variety of experience. And usually research have focused either in one, uh, in one, mod in one, um, manifest in one way of manifestation or in other one. Um, I, there's a lot of research about involuntary auditory imaginary, for example, and there's a lot of uh, research about verbal hallucinations related with pathology. But there is no so much understanding about the full uh, broad uh, variety of auditory experience. And it's why uh, research in video games is allowing to do it. And I think this can be used for different disciplines in a way that we can see all in, in some kind of in behavior, gamer behaviors. So, um, but uh, how common are these experience? Uh, also, I conduct a survey for um, more than 2,500 gamers, and 97% high experience on so uh, GDP, uh, so it's, it's pretty, very common. And in terms of game, in terms of sounds, 85% high experience, some type of auditory experience. So this is the one, the more prevalent, one of the more prevalent modalities in game transfer phenomena, the auditory ones. So again, we hear music, sound, voices from the games. Uh, they hear it in their head, in their ears, coming from objects or somewhere. There is a large variety of video games. They were identified 95, 95 different titles in this quality study. And the songs are, uh, games have proposed sounds coming from uh, ga uh, game consoles. So, um, so it's a lot of variety. So now I'll give you some examples about this gamer's experience. So in voluntary auditory imaginary, when gamers keep hearing the music from the game. Uh, for example, some gamers have heard the music when they are um, when they just, um, uh, trying to fall asleep. And suddenly, uh, because it is, this, this music is very vivid, they can even think that it's coming from the console or the computer, and they have actually standing up from the bed and go to check the computer or the console to see if they leave it on by mistake. So we see how here gamers are misattributing this uh, sound that they are hearing in their head from something coming uh, externalized because they expect that the sounds come from the console. In other cases, we see how these sounds or this music is triggered by activities that gamers are doing in real life. Uh, like when you play Tetris, and then some players that have a, like a, try to put together some trolley, and then they, and some of the trolley, so they suddenly start to hear the music of, of Tetris. So this is basically what why, why the kid. You're probably very familiar with the Tetris sound for sure. Uh, in other cases, also other kinds of sounds occur when gamers are in certain events. For example, the case of this gamer that he hears the sounds uh, the radio makes when the monster is close by in Silent Hill. And when this happens, he starts to look it around to see if the monster is close by. And he says that he has a flashlight uh, next to his bed. So we see how, in some cases, these experiences are uh, resulting in some kind of behavior. And this is the sound of the radio. They are very kind of binaural sounds, and these kind of sounds have been uh, reported in different games that have similar sounds, and gamers have reported to hear these sounds as they play them. So, neural adaptations, auditory neural adaptations. Uh, in this case, this game is said that after play a marathon or portal, uh, portal, portal 1, portal 2, he hears everything in the box of GLaDOS. So it's very characteristic voice that I will show you now. And uh, yeah, it seems that he hears everything. I don't know if he means that he hears everything in his head or actually hearing it. So it's no, it's no detailed information about this. 
Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been fast. So you see a very characteristic voice, and uh, the developer found out that people feel very motivated to play the game, and feel more motivated when they include the voice of the game. So, and this is a little bit extreme, but there is a study that has been induced this thing experimentally when they put participants uh, for, to listen for, for open of time, some female voice, and after that they expose them to some kind of and androgynous voice, and they can hear it uh, more likely to hear it like a female voice. So you see this neural adaptation that probably explain this game of experience. So in the speed, when you hear your words, in, your word, your thoughts in your in words, or, or, or thinking in words, you, you have this internal monologue with yourself. But in this case, games are hearing voices from the game and voices are being completed by activities that they are engaging in real life. For example, it's a gamer that every time that he passes under a sign in the road, he hears checkpoint in his head. You know, so we have some very funny experience. Other gamers, for example, that when he is having a football and he hears a football commentator say the gamer will go over time, he hears in his head, over time, over time, over time. So you see how they are completing and hearing what they expect to hear. Over time. Over time. Oh, this is frustrating. So this is a glitch, but this more like how, how, he, how you hear it in the game. Um, yeah, as I told you, misperception. In this case, gamers misinterpret some sound they have hearing in real life by something from the game. This is the case of a gamer that uh, shut down a door in the back of him and suddenly he hears the sound the spiders from um, Minecraft makes. And he gets scared and he just says that he was wrong. So you see some, sometimes the sounds are not, don't need to be very high pitch because we are associated with certain emotional events and, uh, in the game or very characteristic from the game. So I will talk about uh, self hallucinations. In this case, gamers uh, can hear voices from the video games. And these are one of the more that have been, uh, uh, when hearing comments from gamers, uh, they, they experience this like a more stress, uh, stressful because they are hearing these kind of verbal, these voices. And, um, uh, and, and the best, of course, too much about the video game contents, is how gamers are interpreting this. So sometimes, for example, when gamers see objects uh, in real life, for example, this gamer, after playing uh, uh, this game for a couple of hours, when he passed by for a paint, he hears he hear something like a look. You know, and these are in the game, you see pain, so when he see a pain in real life, he, he has some kind of response. response. In other cases, we see that gamers have report also to constantly hear these voices, uh, like uh, uh, in this white and black, this, uh, the gamer hears someone whispering, and it's interesting because in a radio interview, the gamer say a uh, similar experience with the same game, but he said that he hears David. So I don't know if it's something related with the D, because usually it's some association, some explanation why you are hearing these things, but not necessarily. So I don't know exactly in this game what is the explanation that they are hearing. Uh, death, um. <laughs> so some conclusions. I mean, gamers have heard sounds, music, uh, bullets, light lasers, breathing as well, some perfusive sounds, uh, coins falling. So as I said, there is no necessary sounds that are very high pitch. Not all the time are music, like a very sticky, like a, a, a music from Pokemon or Tetris. It's not a lot of variation. It's a lot of variation. It's, is sounds that are related with rewards in the game, <coughs> emotional experience in the game, and of course that are presented repetitively. So they have some meaningful, meaning, are meaningful for the, for the gamer and are meaningful, important for, for the game, for playing the game. The circumstances, they usually occur when players are falling asleep, uh, they keep hearing the sounds, um, have, uh, sounds of music, and this is very, sometimes very intrusive and it, it, it can occur for prolonged periods of time in a way that gamers, some gamers can, uh, don't fall asleep, they provoke sleep deprivation in some cases. Uh, in other cases, uh, it's, it's very common. This experience occurs in general, again, some of phenomena occur more when you are doing daily activities, when you are engaged with automatic activities, 
It's uh, like a mind wandering. Uh, when you have this intrusion, sometimes images, sometimes sounds, sometimes your thoughts, and this manifests in the same way. Uh, but what is interesting with uh, what I have identified again transfer phenomena and the core of again transfer phenomena is that this experience occurs by association with object, objects and events in real life. In real life. And sometimes this experience occurs in this way. I mean, gamers uh, hear what they expect to hear when they see certain object. And these activities, yeah, the songs are regulated by activities that gamers are doing in real life. And this is similar that we see with people that have uh, um, ver I hear verbal hallucinations in, in schizophrenia, for example. But here gamers interpret it as something coming from the game. After, in the beginning page, some gamers get scared. But after that, they realize that it's coming from the game and, and uh, they don't develop this kind of irrational thought and, and perhaps irrational behaviors. But uh, there is excep exceptions, of course. Um, so there, there is um, um, many gamer reports that they experience this when they play in very long, for long periods of time. Uh, there is no any player in the quality study that says that they play very short periods of time when, when this happens. But uh, in general, in the phenomena, it can happen also when you don't play so long time. So it's dependent the individual and depend the type of the game. So how they, they interpret this? They were in different ways, positive, neutral, or negative. It depends about the contents of the game. It depends how, how frequent are these experiences, in which circumstances they occur. And, uh, and uh, but in the survey, they, there is a large percentage of people that have gender phenomena, something positive. But 20% 20, 20 have experienced some type of distress at some point. So we don't know exactly which is, uh, in which modality we can experience in the survey, but there is something to research about to understand this. And these findings in this study suggest that there is more implications, more psychological implications to this intrusion, this auditory experience, uh, more than when you're hearing, you have airworms or the music gets stuck in your head. But why is this? Why, why have it more implications? Well, there is important to study the difference between listening to music and interact with sound. And in video games, we are interacting with sound. Sounds are presented in the video games together with activities, with events. It takes sometimes positive and sometimes negative, uh, uh, negative um, uh, um, uh, properties. So, um, so then, then, then video games, uh, gamers, when they hear with sounds in real life, they, they interpret it in the, in the, simil in the similar way. Um, these, these sounds are eliciting thought, emotions, sensations, sometimes illogical thought, and sometimes a false expectation that gaming actually expect to hear uh, uh, to, that something happens as in the game, because video games are developed in some sequence of events. Everything that you do has some, uh, some consequences. So when he, gamers hear the sounds or see these images, they expect that something happens in real life, at least for seconds. But this is the normal response. So I usually call these objects that have been associated with sounds and images and events in the game evocative objects, because they are elicit something in gamers, at least emotions, thoughts, uh, and sensations, and, and these uh, illogical thoughts sometimes. So I speculate that these sounds, uh, these objects are associated, uh, are, that are associated with sound, are activating the art, uh, auditory cortex. And this is why it's resulting in these kind of ghost, uh, ghost uh, sounds. So I think with developing video games, it's important uh, to consider what, uh, what, what we are, how the video game, the sounds are embedded in games, how they are doing it, and with which purposes, and, uh, and also how we can take the, the, the best advantage to develop video games. And when we are studying association between sounds and events, we are seeing here how gamers are actually uh, re replaying these sounds, and this replay of sounds are triggering certain emotions, certain thoughts. So I think this for gamer, games in learning, uh, change behavior, it can be very, very useful if we pay attention how sounds are embedded. But also it's important to think about the consequences about the prolonged exposure uh, to these, uh, these sounds, or these ambient sounds that sometimes have the video games. What, what is this happening? And there is no research in this area. In, uh, at least I have not found it, uh, much research in this area about even what are the states when players are playing the game 
and neither cause effects about video game playing related to auditory cues. Um, so, um, airworms are very annoying, but you can have a 20% discount in airworms. If you want to le learn language, there is some lang uh, language that are promoted where you can hear the sound, the certain phrases repetitively, and they, they uh, <coughs> say that you can learn language. I believe that it can help for some people, and I believe a certain degree can be very useful. So it's not everything uh, needs to be necessarily annoying, and sometimes airworms are not necessarily be annoying. Sometimes you just don't, people start singing. So it depends on the individual, it depends on how, how intrusive these experiences are. So something that one of the most important objectives in my research uh, is to, um, to demystify this experience, to explain this experience as not pathological, to, uh, that players found themselves that they are not the only one experience this, especially when these uh, sounds, and, uh, uh, sounds are associated with aversive experience. It uh, uh, depends, of course, about the contents of the games, are explosions, bullets, screams, that in some, uh, some cases gamers have experienced some kind of stress. So this is very important, how gamers interpret this experience. How, 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 because when pathology doesn't occur just right away, it's something that develops over the time and it starts by uh, rational interpretation of, uh, about this experience, this uh, non-evolutional experience, things that you cannot control. So some references. And I don't know if you are aware about this uh, haptic uh, gaming vest, which promised that uh, you will feel the sound rather than hear it and that it, it turns your body into a subwoofer. So this is a new technology that are coming. This is already in sale. And I have found a lot of involuntary movements, body sensations, uh, and all this auditory and visual, just with the video game that we have today. And with many of the, because these are experiences collected in forums. So this is one of the limitations. So I want that you be aware about that. But there are similarities. Uh, between gamers' experience. I have before this, before my PhD, I, I studied for my master thesis and I did interview with gamers. And there are similarities along all the different studies that I have conducted today. And we see this with very old VR games as well. So it seems also the individual susceptibility. Not everybody will be susceptible to this experience. So I just for finish, you, if you want to continue, you follow my research. This is my page. You can follow my blog, or Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I'm about to. Uh, to meet my thesis next next uh, November, but I want to continue to this with my postdoc. So it's something that it's a project that will continue. So this is like at the second stage. Thank you very much. So have we any questions? No, I can't investigate anything about that, but I'm sure, I mean, this is, you know, this is just a focus in video games, but this, this definitely is app applied to everything. I mean, all different technology, vibrations in the cell phone, and these are these ghost sensations, type of sensations, so also apply to this. I mean, now this week, uh, uh, it was also, cancer phenomena was associated with uh, a case of um, um, a, a guy that were in a, uh, submitted some clinic because he had a goggle glasses addiction. So he started to see his dreams through the device and also have involuntary movement were trying to control the, the device when the device were not there. Mm. And this is exactly what we are seeing here. Sometimes gamers have even uh, moved their arms trying to use the hook. When they try to use the video games elements in real life, try to, they move their, their arms. So it's a lot of similarity. So this is, uh, yeah, it will, it will help us to understand the effects in general of technology. So yeah, but I'm not aware about any study. If this are you know, please let me know. I think it's quite interesting because we've been trying to talk some very similar about sort of addiction to games and so on. I think this is a really quite interesting thing because there's all the fact that they have lowly in response, isn't there? So people are actually, you know, because they've been training and doing this stuff so much, they're carrying on responding even when you remove the, the, the stimuli. So it's great, it reminds me of that very classical Pavlovian dog 
Yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, it's conditioning behavior. And yeah. this is what happens also with adults. You know, sometimes you will think that just happened with children, but it happened to adults. And gamers are responding to these stimulus that they have learned to respond in a certain way. Some gamers have just experienced maybe just some thoughts. Some gamers have experienced some kind of urge to do something as in the game. Some gamers have heard something. Some gamers have seen something. Some gamers have actually do some behavior. When you can do the behavior in real life, they have actually do it. So it depends so much on the individual. If you can control your impulses, you can control your, you can your, your, your behavior, then you will not do it. But in some cases, some gamers that are not capable to control the impulses, they will have some, 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 some behavior or manifest in different ways. So, so it's, yeah, we need to investigate more about who, which uh, individuals are more susceptible to this experience. So there is, so far, it's, uh, we don't know. Hello, um, you made a distinction between listening just listening to music and games for the sort of audio the effect of the of, of audio. Do you I mean, how different do you really think it is? I mean I maybe it's pretty possibly a difference in the amount of time you listen to it, but obviously the idea of earworms in music is a bit sort of a mainstream thing now, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, I think most people actually most people, a lot of people who have experienced sure, earworms yeah. in music. I've experienced them in music and in games, so I appreciate what you're saying, but I just wonder if you give how much of a distinction there really is. Yeah, well, it depends about the experience, you know, because it's a learned variety. So, you, you experience airborne, for instance, music from the game. It's pretty similar than listening music from your favorite song. So, this is similar, but where it's different is the consequences about that. Because when you hear a sound and you have this reply a sound, maybe you have some memory for a nice moment, or you maybe it provokes some emotion, the thing three, but it don't, re it don't provoke some, re some response, some behavioral response. And um, what we see here is, is uh, because these sounds sometimes are associated with aversive experience in the game, the game will get scared. So you don't get this, this uh, dissociation, it's, you know, some, sometimes you hear some sound and say, like, oh, what is going on? You don't have this when you keep hearing music from the song. So the consequences, the psychological consequences, it depends on the video game content and how gamers interpret this experience. And this is why my goal is to dismystify and to follow about this experience. So gamers interpret this like a, something derivated from the game and try to interpret it in the best way. But uh, there are similarities in certain experience. It depends. It depends. But there are, the consequences are different in the most like, of the cases. Like, like there's an additional comment. I mean, an interesting area might be to look at dementia. Um, music is very, very powerful. Sort of, uh, dementia. Dementia mm -hmm. and Alzheimer's disease. The idea that music has a very, can have a very powerful effect, even if you don't even understand where you heard the sound. The emotional effect of the memory of what you were doing when you when you heard the sound can be, can be very powerful. It'd be really interesting to see um, whether games have a similar effect in, in Alzheimer's. Uh, in yeah, well, there is things that happen, you know, at uh, subconscious level, and they, these people have it. I mean, there are experiments where they have induced seeing video game images uh, in laboratory, and people even with, uh, with uh, some failures in memories or no memory at all have, have seen the images even though they don't recall to play the game. So, so yeah, yeah, probably it's pretty much the same in sound. Yeah. So, I think one of the things I, I came across in sort of education theory you know, is the idea of the brain measures all these things. So if you think back to what happened a month ago, uh, and immediately you were at, you can remember how you felt and what the room was like and what you talked about and what you ate. You didn't set out to remember those things, but you're in the, uh, your brain stores it. And one of the problems in education sometimes is we don't make any use of that multi-level impact on learning. So yeah. the interesting thing with this would be, yeah. can you use some of this to reinforce learning, which is what video gaming sometimes does when, it, when it's in its most effective thing. Because it's using a different aspect of the brain. So it's, yeah. it's interesting because you're such saying it's a mixed blessing and it can cause problems for some people. Yeah, yeah, but not necessarily, you know, oh, not necessarily. So it depends how you experience mm -hmm. it, how frequently and what are the contents. So it can definitely use for learning. I mean, things you can elicit sounds that are associated with modified positive behaviors, then it can definitely trigger positive feelings, you, uh, you know, for example, yeah, happiness or whatever you want to do. So, and this is the thing, there is not a lot of sense about conscious things. There are instruments that measure conscious behavior, conscious thought, but not unconscious thought. And this is the core of the phenomena, all these things that you cannot control, all these non-evolutional phenomena, in the different modalities to understand the effects. And I have been um, 
show really, really very interesting results where you can research in many different areas. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, um, next